Um, okay, so welcome back everybody. Hello to our online students. Today what we're going to do is take a look at something called calorimetry. Calorimetry is a chemistry technique that we can use to make some interesting calculations, figuring out how much energy is being transferred from one thing to another. And it's based off of this equation that we saw the last time that we got together, and that was that the Q, the enthalpy, is equal to mass times the specific heat times the change in temperature. And we can use this equation to do some interesting things, such as we can make it equal to itself. I know that, that sounds a little weird, right? We're going to make this equation equal to itself. But, but here, let, let me explain how this works. Uh, there was a, a real-world problem that happened a little while back, and that was there was this shipwreck. And the ship had been lost for about 100 years. Uh, they sent a submersible down, and then they, they surveyed the wreck, and they pulled up metal rivets. Rivets are like nails that hold sheets of metal together. They pulled these rivets out, and then they analyzed them. They wanted to know what they were made out of. Were they made out of iron? Were they made out of steel, copper, whatever? And so they needed a way to try to figure this out. And they used a technique called calorimetry. The way calorimetry works is you have a calorimeter, which is just a fancy term, really, for a styrofoam cup. And, and there's fancier ones available out there. But you take yourself a styrofoam cup, and you put some water into this styrofoam cup like this. Okay, and have some water in there. And then what you can do is you can drop a piece of heated metal into your calorimeter. Now, now here's, here's the idea. If you heat up a piece of metal, so it's warmer than, than the water, and you drop it into the water, the piece of metal will cool down, and the water will warm up until eventually they're the same temperature. They come to uh, what we call a thermal equilibrium. They'd be the same temperature. And the amount of energy that is lost from the rivet, excuse me, is lost from the water, no, lost from the rivet, yeah, lost from the rivet would be equal to the amount of energy that goes into the water. Okay? So the way that we would describe this mathematically here is to say that we have our, our Q here of our rivet is equal to our Q of the water. And the energy is leaving the rivet, so we would make this negative. We'd say that the energy lost from the rivet is equal to the energy gained by the water. So then we can expand this equation out, and we can say then that the mass times the specific heat times the change in temperature of the rivet minus is equal to the mass, the specific heat of water, times the change in temperature of the water. They would be equal to each other. Now, in this particular question, uh, the, we have some numbers here. We have that the rivet started out at 99.8 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to call that temperature initial. That's our starting temperature here of our rivet. And that's 99.8 degrees Celsius. And we have a starting temperature for our water. Our starting temperature here for our water, uh, temperature initial is equal to 21.0 21.0 degrees Celsius. And then uh, they come to thermal equilibrium. They, the, the water warms up, the rivet cools down, and when we're all done, we end up with the T sub F. Our final temperature is equal to 23.1 degrees Celsius. And we have some masses in here as well. We have our mass of water. I'm going to say mass of H2O is equal to 225 grams. And our rivet here, our rivet has a mass of mm, 55 grams. Mass rivet is 55 grams. 
So now I can start plugging these numbers into the equation. And what I'm going to solve for here, it says um, the specific heat. What is, what is the metal rivet made out of? So let's just plug some numbers in here. I'm going to start with my rivet. So I'm going to go negative. Mass of my rivet is 55.0 grams. The specific heat here, C sub S, I don't know what that is, but I'm going to solve for that. And then my change in temperature. Now my change in temperature, this is temperature final minus temperature initial. So that's going to be temperature final is 23, 23.1 minus my initial is 99.8. 99.8 degrees Celsius. Okay. And then on the other side here, I have our water. So that's 225 grams yeah. times the specific heat of water. And I don't, does it give us the specific heat of water? It doesn't. But that's a constant. That's 4.184. So that's 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius times our change in temperature. And our change in temperature for our water is 23.1 degrees Celsius minus 21.0 degrees Celsius. That's temperature final minus temperature initial. And so now we just need to do some math. And to make our, our lives a little easier, what I like to do is, is in these brackets here with the temperature, I just like to do the math on that. And so that comes out to a negative 76.7 degrees Celsius. And over here, I'm going to have 2.1 degrees Celsius. And when it's all said and done, we end up with a specific heat here. Our specific heat comes out to 0 0.4686. And that should be joules per gram degree Celsius is our specific heat. Is There's lots of different variables in here. So I'm thinking like a test type question. What if I asked you to find the mass? Could you do that if you were given everything else? Or to be really tricky, what if I asked you what the final temperature was? So when things come to an equilibrium, could you find what the final temperature is? So we'd be solving for T sub F and solving for T sub F over here. Now, it's just order of operations. Remember order of operations, you do multiplication and division before you do adding and subtracting. And it gets a little frustrating because you, you'll look at problems like this and you go, okay, the math on this isn't that complicated. Really, it's just order of operations. But if you're not real careful with your, your negative signs here, it's going to throw off your calculations. And so you've you got to be really careful. It's, it's, it's simple, but um, it can get frustrating really quick. And I'm going to point out something to you. I guess one other thing here is, is if you're solving for the final temperature, as just a hint, when this comes to thermal equilibrium, the final temperature has to be between those two points, doesn't it? It has to be cooler than the hottest thing, and it has to be warmer than the cooler, coolest thing. Because the temperature, when it comes to equilibrium, has to be somewhere in between. So it's just a way to check your work. Now this particular problem, the reason uh, scientists were trying to figure this out is the ship uh, was sailing, and in 1912, it hit a large object. It was an iceberg. And the, the front of the ship here had rivets that were made out of iron, and some other parts of the ship, most of the rest of the ship, was made out of steel. And steel is harder or stronger than is iron. And the speculation was that the ship when it hit that iceberg, where those iron rivets were, that's where the hull failed. 
And so when they do it, went and did an analysis, they found out, yeah, that, that is true. That's where the hull failed, is where those iron rivets were. Which then also begs the question, why would they use iron rivets on only part of the ship? And, and why didn't they use steel rivets on the whole ship? And as it turns out, as they were building the ship, they were using steel rivets, and then they hit a budget crunch. They were running out of money. And so to save money, the contractor said, oh, you know, I can get these iron rivets for a whole lot less, right? And so they just decided, yeah, yeah who's going to know, right? I mean, <laughs> right? In the big scheme of things, what's the big deal? So uh, they used iron rivets on the front of the ship. And, of course, you know what ship this is. Yeah, it's the Titanic. <laughs>